What if I tell you that this network is the same as this network here and in my pencil board and it's the same as this network as ported to Onyx using Nitron and is the same as this network summary here printed out uh, in text and is the same as this network definition here this fit forward network definition here and there's one more remaining let me just show you and it's also the same as this one now let's backtrack and let's just uh, take a second look before we start designing and explaining this network. I want you to understand exactly how neural networks work, how data flow through the network, how the number of neurons and the weights of the network contributes to the output of the network and how this aligns to the input of the network as well. Now this is the network definition. We are going to go through it or line by line I'm going to explain to you. And there is a forward pass on the network. You can see it has two layers, layer one, layer two. This network is transforming an input from a number of features to another number of features and then transforming it back into the original number of features. I'm going to explain that to you as well. So linear layer one takes an input of one by gives an output of one by one by four. The original input is one by one by two. It transforms it into one by one by four internally and then outputs finally one by one by two. It reduces it back to the original dimension. Now let's look at this. So this is a Netron uh, diagram. So we have the input is, uh, in this case, the output here is two by four and the output here in this case is one by two right so here we have a batch size by one by two and it also gives us by one by two but internally it changes the dimension from two to four and then converts it back from four to two right here we are going to spend time on it so don't worry i'm going to explain to you bit by bit and also this is the tensor board and here we have exactly the same thing. I want you to take a look at what is happening here. Uh, let's start from the, uh, the input of this tensor board of this network. So you can have one by one by two, batch size of one, number of uh, inputs is one, number of features is two. So let's see what goes here. Now, after the first linear layer, we now have one by one by four. It transforms it into four features, four features, and linear layer two transforms it back into two features. And at the end of the day, we have one by one by two. Let's look at the final diagram. This is one I drew myself. I'm going to now show you how all this works. Layer one takes the four features and produces two features sorry layer one takes the two features x1 and x2 and produces four features and layer two takes the four features y1 y2 y3 and y4 and produces back two features y uh, y1 prime and y2 prime and this is what is happening here two features x1 and x2 going in transformed into four features transformed back into two features Let's now go into the actual uh, mathematical operations on how this hooks up. I'm going to first show you the theoretical uh, uh, intuition behind it, and then we are going to go write the code, and then we export this to the tensor board, and then we see, we take uh, maybe a more complex network. So the first thing I'm going to do is to erase everything and let's start from the scratch. So what is the first thing you want to do when you want to build a network? You want to ask yourself, what do I want to do with this network? So this network in this situation, we want to transform a number of features to a higher dimension, maybe to, to extract more information, and then we reduce it back to the original number of features. That means we need two layers. The first layer to to project it to a higher dimension and the second layer to reduce it back to the original dimension. So that means that we need two layers. So if we want to visualize, we can say, this is the first layer, this is the first layer, and we call this L or layer one. And this is the second layer. I'm going to just draw it up here. And this is our layer two. Okay, now layer one takes some inputs, which in this case is one by one by 
2. And layer 1 produces an output 1 by 1 by 4. We are going to uh, show exactly what this means. And layer 2 takes 1 by 1 by 4 and produces 1 by 1 by 2. Okay, so let's go ahead to get started. So let's examine layer 1. For you to be able to take an input of 1 by 1 by 2 and produce a 1 by 1 by 4, first you need to understand what 1 by 1 by 2 means. So 1, this is a batch size, so I'm going to write it out. The first one is the batch size. So this is the number of inputs the network takes in a given time. For now, it is just one input. The second item is the length of the input. So uh, I think we can just call it inputs. I think that's the name or input size. So in this case, we only have one single input. And the last one is the number of features. So let's take, for instance, you have an input that has two features. How do you represent two features? You may have something like x1 and x2. So basically, if you have an equation that involves these two, then those are the two features you want to transform. So if you have something like y is equal to x1 plus x2, so this is a typical example of a function of a network that takes two inputs and produces one output. It's not that trivial. Let's just continue uh, from the way it is. So we have two features and we want to produce produce four features from these uh, two inputs. So the first thing we want to realize is if we want to produce four features, then we need four neurons. This is a rule of thumb. The number of features you want to produce at the output is the number of neurons you need on your network. So let's draw our first layer that will take two inputs and produce four outputs. So this is one, two, three, and four. So this is the four neurons on this layer, right? So this is the layer that will take the initial input x1 and x2. Now, how does it work? Each of these neurons is going to take the two features and produce one feature from each of the neurons, right? So each of these neurons is going to take the two features and then it's going to produce one feature. So in this case, we have x1 and x2, x1 and x2, right? We have x1 and x2, and we are going to pass this input into all these neurons. So how it works is each of the neuron is going to take the two, process the two inputs. Now we are talking about batch size is one and the number of input length is one. So for now, we just have one of this, right? So we have only two features we want to process. We are going to pass these two features across to this neuron. Sorry, let me write it to be a bit straight. So we are going to pass this input to this neuron and we are going to pass this input to this neuron, this x1 and x2, we are going to send it across to this neuron. We're also going to send the same x1 and x2 to this neuron. We are going to send the same to this neuron and we are going to send the same to this neuron, right? Now, we've sent them to this neuron and each of these neuron here has a weight associated with it and the weight is normally specified on the left-hand side of the neuron. So this neuron one, let's call it neuron A1, A2, A3, A4. So neuron one, this first one has a weight W1. The second one has a weight W2, the third one has a weight W3, and the fourth one has a weight of what? W4. Now what's going to happen is this neuron, they are going to produce outputs. So A1, let's look at what A1 produces. A1 is going to, of course, each of them also has a bias, like W1 um, it also has a bias. But let's kind of uh, ignore the bias for now. So let's say we have A1 produces W1, X1. So I'm going to actually write in a different color so that we can understand exactly what is happening here. So we are saying, what is this neuron going to produce? It's going to produce, let's say it produces 
A1, sorry, not A1, A1. So it's going to produce a multiplication of the inputs with the weights. It's going to multiply each of the inputs with the weights. So it's going to produce W1, X1 plus W1, X2. Then each of the neuron has some activation attached to it. So plus A1. So what is going to be this is going to, let's call it Y1. So this is the first dimension of the output. And let's take a look at the second one. So A2 is going to produce, um, is going to produce, in this case, it's going to be W2 X1 plus W2 X2 plus worth A2. And this is going to be our Y2, the second dimension of the output. Remember, we are trying to convert from, transform from two dimension to four dimension. And at least I think by now, you have the idea. So we have A3 and we have A4, all right? So A3 is also going to produce one dimension as well. W3 is going to act on X1 and is going to act on X2 as well. And it's going to be plus the activation A3. And this is going to be Y3. And the same, this neuron here is going to also produce an output W4 x1 plus actually this is 3 plus w4 x2 uh, plus a4 and this is going to be y4 so now what happens here we have transformed y uh, x1 x2 two dimensions to four dimensions which is what we have right here so we've gone from one by one by two all the way to one by one by four now I want to go back from one by one by four to one by one by two. And that brings us to our second layer on this network, layer two. Takes one by one by four and produces one by one by two. Okay, so we are going to write this second layer here because this second layer is going to be feeding on the outputs of the first uh, layer. So I think I'm going to just put a border around this. So this is our layer one. This is our layer one. Okay, so let's talk about our layer two. Our layer two is going to take like two neurons, right? Because we've established a rule of thumb that says, a rule of thumb that says, if you want certain number of outputs, then that will be exactly the number of neurons you want. And now the output for A1, the output of A1, Y, Remember, we say that each of these is going to connect to each of the neurons. So what we are saying is, in this case, we are multiplying X1 and X2 goes to W1. In the same way, we have Y1 to 4 will also go to, let's call it A1 prime and A2 prime. So all of these outputs, Y1 to 4, will go to A1 right so y1 to 4 is going to a1 okay so what we are saying now is this neuron here is going to receive all the outputs of y right so it means that all the outputs all the y1 to 4 the four features we want to transform to two so all the four features must go to each of the neurons so in this case a1 produces y1 y2 y3 y4 so we are going to send all of them here all right we send all of them here and when we send all this uh um when we send all this input y1 to 4 all the features here we are going to have also this has weight so a1 has a weight associated with it which in this case the weight associated with a1 is w1 prime and the weight associated with a2 is w2 prime so we are now going to also send all these across to a2 as well sorry it might be a bit tricky but what i'll recommend try to pause this video and do exactly the same thing i'm doing okay so let's now see what the output here is going to be so this output here is also going to be exactly the same as this but in this case we only have how many weights 
we have two weights sorry how many weights we now have two weights and four inputs so let's see how the outputs might look like so a1 prime a1 prime let's see what it's going to give us a1 prime is going to give us w1 prime y1 plus w1 prime y2 right all the in, all the outputs going into the inputs a1 plus w1 prime y3 plus w1 prime y4 and there is an activation associated with each of the neurons so it's going to be plus a1 prime and this is going to be what y1 prime and we do the same thing for this a2 this neuron is going to give us the same similar to this is going to be this case a2 has a different rate it's going to be w2 prime y1 plus w2 prime y2 plus w2 prime y3 plus w2 prime y4 plus the activation alpha 1 prime and this is our y2 prime so what is happening here is that we've provided a linear transformation of our inputs down up to four dimensions and we are also providing the four dimensions we are reducing it back to two by uh, dimension by taking the weighted sum in this case we are using the weight of the output neurons in the output layer so i'm going to just put around this i'm going to just put this so this is how exactly this network works internally and this is the intuition and this is the theory behind every neural network you might encounter generally except uh, for the transformer architecture that behaves a little bit differently so i'd like to move on to the next part but since this video might get too long i'm going to cut it here and in the next part we are going to take all this what we've learned and now going to code it in pytosh and then be able to visualize or export this as an image or visualize it in tensorboard but for now hope this uh, makes it a bit clear to you how neural networks work how dimensions can be reduced or increased and how the computation is handled i remain timeson and i always remind you uh, please subscribe to my channel support me uh, support my channel by clicking on that thanks button below this video also leave me a comment also you can support me on patreon as well if you have any specific problem about data science and machine learning please uh, reach out to me as well and i will always be happy to help you so we see in the next part